M0FXB. Welcome to my Flex 8 400 beginner's guide using the control panel. I'm new to this as well. So let's start off with the basics. So this, this window here that we can move just by left clicking our mouse and look, I'm just clicking on this, this shadow here and I'm moving right and left. Okay. So this window is actually called a slice flag. Now imagine that it's another radio, okay? And it starts off very small like this, okay? And this is a slice of the frequency that you that you have chosen that, you know, you can move around. But you can also right click, if you right click here anywhere on the scope, you can go create slice. We've now got two, and you can actually listen to both at the same time. Now, if you buy the Flex, I believe, 8600, you can listen to four at the same time. You can also have a dual pan adapter just by on the bottom left here. There's a tiny little plus that will vanish when I click it. And we've got dual pan adapters. Each pan adapter, each slice is controlled and the selections are, are changed independently from each other. So it's pretty cool. But let's keep it simple. So to close the bottom pan adapter for now, we're just going to click the little x here and we're back to the single one here so how do we select the mode or the band well if we go we've got a couple of ways of doing this on the far left you've got band okay we click 40 we go there or just go click the band button again we can go here see it says lsb when we select lsb we can actually change the band width so generally 3.3 and there it is there <clears throat> as well so that's nice and straightforward we can also control the volume so if we click again the item that you've clicked click the speaker on the left here we've got the volume here okay we can slide that i'll keep it down while i'm just showing this also if you we've got two slices here if we want to remove one there's a small x here if we want to add one, right click, create slice. There's also create TNF, that's a notch filter. Now over to the right at the top here, because I'm on my PC, I've selected PC audio, okay? And there's, there's another slider here for the speakers on my computer, and it does select your default one uh, just by default. We've also got, if you've plugged in your headphones, you've got the headphone gain here. At the top here, we've got these windows. If we turn them all on, they open up here. You can see them. And there is actually a slider to slide up and down. This window uh, is where I would adjust the step. So if I want to tune now, I'll just bring my mouse in the spectrum area and I'll just scroll my mouse up and down. Like so. Okay. Up and down. But what about the step? Because we can just click the frequency and type 7150. Okay, enter. You don't even have to put the dot in. It will do it for you. And Or we can go to, where is it? Down here. And see what it says? Step. Step. We can change that. Let's do quite a big one. Let's do three. So now, when we scroll through... We're scrolling through in those increments and I like to use one and there you go. Oh, that's one kilohertz. So if we go the other way, they are one K. And then obviously if you want to fine tune, you can uh, change that. Scrolling up and down here, if you scroll back up to the top. See, I've got an analog meter there, which is very nice. I can see it says here. A N L G. Look, we can go to this style, but the analog one I prefer. You've got your R F power here as well, just here, and <clears throat> T X select. So what it's going to show when you transmit? I think I'm going to put S W R, and then S meter is peak or just S meter. If you want to use your antenna tuner, and I've got my power quite low, and you just click here. And it's tuning now. Now you do have to have selected. See, I've got an error here on the bottom right hand side. <coughs> Just here. It's because I haven't told this slice. I know the word slice, the term slice. Um, but it, it's just, I call it like my VFO line. And I know that I can have two. 
So we can close down these volume adjustments here, but before I do actually, look here, you've got the medium, the ADC, fast, medium and slow, and you can adjust this here. And you'll find that you use that quite a lot. DSP as well, here, noise blank and noise reduction, notch filter, LSB. Let's close that down. <coughs> So now we need to select which slice. So if I add another slice now, it says here, if I right click on the waterfall, create slice, I've added another slice. Now, if we want to transmit on this one, yeah, we can now use our tuner. The power is still low, so we're gonna, and it's now tuning, okay? You can hear it clicking away. I'm just using a 49 to one bell and a, and a long wire. It's not great, but it's, um. The tuner works and the tuner is an additional module and my device does actually have a gps module in it as well so further down you've got apd and i've make, been making notes this reduces distortion um this, i mean there's so much to go through i literally have to write everything down you've got dx selections here further down where it says mic you can select your mic look here they do come with an fh it's fh there it is there fhm3 microphone that plugs in the back there's two cables onto one microphone it looks like a yesu mic i think it is a yesu mic <coughs> so you can use that or it, like i said it's default at the moment because i'm using my pc and it will use the same speaker that i'm talking into now which is actually sorry microphone which is actually excellent and you've got different compression and level settings here. Mox, and uh, what's this one here? SO2RTX1, SO2. I, I don't actually know what that is. I'll have to look that one up. So I think that's the basics, really, because you need to know the frequency you're on, the band you're on, the band width, which is in there, your transmit power, which is here. And it's actually, you can see the number, there's 100 there. Tuning power you can select. And that's it. And just let's turn up the volume so we can actually hear what's there. Um, let's get it so you can hear this. Audio capture. There it goes. Hopefully you're going to be able to hear this. One thing I just thought of is your antennas. When you're in your slice window, let's close that one down just to keep it simple. You've got your receive antenna that you can choose. And then the red one is your transmit antennas one and two there. Plus the other receive antennas as well. And notice they've got split mode there. So I've not used that before. But you've also got split mode. And you can look at this. You can just have the frequency there. If you want to minimize it, just by clicking the little B there. DAX, that is your, and I wrote this down, digital audio exchange. So when you start using that and you select a number, when you open WSJTX, you select that and it's, it's and I'm going to do a completely separate video because I don't want to get it wrong. And that is you using, um, you using WSJTX just a couple of clicks. So let's just have a listen. We click some of these frequencies. Well, we can scroll. And of course, it's not only that. It's Click the speaker. We can go louder and quieter. We can add another slice. Let's add a, another pan adapter. Click in bottom left. We've got another pan adapter. Turn that up. We can change band on the left here. Look, you've also got the antenna selections. Let's do 14. As you know, we do 20. So I'll turn the 40 meters down. Click that little speaker, removes that from the, from the slice flag. Uh, let's uh, just scroll along here and notice that the TX 
is moving there. We'll do the step. Go back down here. And look at your equalizers. You bring all these in here, look. FT8, and we will do a video. FT8, change the step. Not too much going on for me at the moment. This time of day, it always seems to be 40 meters for me. Hit the speaker, turn that down. Speaker up. Put the TX back up there. There can't be many magazines left. You know, regular, regular periodicals that either come out on a weekly or monthly basis. There must be. Click your flag, and you you can actually move. If you go here, look. You can change how much water for, and this is on the A and the B band. And then you've got the bandwidth adjustment just, just by clicking and then when it, you've got two arrows you can change it like that and just go back to your mode and just click here and a lot, I know that a lot of the colors are customizable so really that's your basics really you want to put your frequency in select your mode select your bandwidth select your power do your Use your antenna tuner, which was just here. And then, you know, I've got the hand microphone here. You see it transmit there. And, uh, and you've got your selections here as well. So I hope this helps you get started. You've got these two arrows I've noticed here. If you click, and they're on both pan adapters. We can shut this one down. We can just hit the X and now we're just on the bottom one and move that across just by clicking going right and left. Uh, if we don't like being on that band, then we just go band 40. Turn it up at the top. Yeah, five seven also. I think it goes to Peter next to the top. Bit of a net going on there. <clears throat> and in seconds we have on offer to So I think that's enough for now. I mean it's this is this is an advanced piece of equipment. It works great. Look at the reviews. And there's a, there's a lot more to this than I'm showing. You've got a whole settings menu when you go here, look. I'll just quickly show that. And I haven't even gone into that menu yet. And I've been tinkering for a few hours. So we go settings, radio setup. There's my radio. My one has got GPS, which I didn't know it would come with that. I had to pay extra for the antenna tuner. There's my network. And you'll find that when you go to log in, if you hover over your radio, it will give you all your IP address. There's my IP address there. I've got this microphone. Sorry, not microphone. I've got this. Okay, which will connect. This has the Flex firmware uh, version of this. I got this one from G7 UFO. And it has a actually has a color screen. I can control the frequency and many, many other parameters. Via, and it connects via Wi-Fi. So that's going to be for another video. Of course, I'm going to do a video doing WSJTX, which looks like it's plug and go on this device. TPS, TX phone, receive filters, filters, XVTR, got all that. Then you've got your save global settings, I guess. Create transmit profile, create a mic profile. It's also that you don't have to keep changing it. You know, you've got your presets. Profile manager, export, ex import, export profiles, some other people, ones that you've made. And then STR default there. Help. And then definitely join a community. One click to get to the community and the help desk. And, and don't message them direct. Message on the community, then the answers help everyone. 
and so on and so on and so on. So I'm looking forward to playing with the DAC side of it because because it's an SDR and the way this you know the way this works, um, you can interface with programs like WSJTX instantly because you're already on your computer. And the other thing is if I want to connect connect the second monitor to my computer, which nowadays is really simple, but I'm gonna I might do it today, I can drag this across onto my computer. Or if I want to set up smart link, I can just log in on my other computer. I don't uh and then I'm viewing this screen and controlling it. Uh, and as I saw in a video the other day um, it's, it doesn't take up loads of processor um, of your laptop because it, you're basically transmitting almost like a movie. It's almost like we're watching a YouTube video, but you can control the the controls of the radio. So they've really thought this through uh, from the ground up. And for for linking anywhere in the world, it's so straightforward. You literally, once you've created your SmartLink account, you literally just log in and you're there. Uh, most of us, you know, we don't like playing around with setting up ports and all that. Well, the idea is that that um, Flex does it pretty much makes it easy for you. I'm not saying it's always going to be easy because it depends how complicated your setup is at home. But if you're just a, a cable to a router, I, I feel like it won't be that hard for you to configure. And even if it is, there's a lot of support for you out there. And I mean, yeah, just look at the um, the, re the reviews. And if you decide to go for See, now I've gone here for this kind, which is in front of me. And it's like a computer on its side, basically. Um, but if, you know, if you if you want to, you can buy the M model and then the front will look like this. And this is the, this is actually the Maestro. It's a separate unit um, that's, that is identical to the front of what you would get if you went for the M model that includes the front. You do get more with the M, you pay a lot more for it, but you do get, you know, some of them having antenna tuners included, uh, HDMI included, but you are, you know, the money goes up quite a lot once you're in that range. Uh, even the Maestro is a good £1,600, but it means you can pick that this up. It's quite lightweight, although it's bigger than you think. It's as big as the front of a 7610 because um, I've been measuring, uh, but you can take it anywhere in the world and you are, as long as your radio is on at home, connected to the network, you can log into it and you can, if you're a worker person that works abroad, works away all the time, but loves playing radio, you put this out, put it on the table and you've got a full desktop base station experience there. Um, uh, and I, I, I haven't tried this out yet, but I feel like you can allow other people to log into your system because they don't have to have the maestro. You know, they can just like me, you can use uh, I know now there's software for your iPad, iPhone, uh, of course, free Windows software and um, and then you can buy interface items like this. So anyway, for me, a big thumbs up for it. And, I, you know, and um, I think it's one of the you're ahead. Of, it's future proof this. I feel like if you get it now, if you get something like this now, you, 10 years from now, you could still be using it and be very happy with it. And there's firmware updates and software and backup. So thanks for watching my and remember i am a learner i am a beginner i've only been using this for two hours um but i'm making this video to just show you the basics and i've looked at my list here i think i remembered everything it's slices apd the dash which the dax which is digital audio exchange tx buttons pc sam everything i wrote down i've uh i've got there bye for now seven three all the best